Hi, this is Chris Clark with the Virtual Trombonist. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about a recent blog post I, I put up uh, regarding long tones and uh, this idea of instant sound when you start your long tones. Um, some of you may be going, enough with the long tones already, all right? I get it. I should do my long tones. And that's fine. Uh, I hope you'll permit me to talk a little more about it because uh, there is one thing that I've realized in my own playing that's uh, kind of gotten sloppy over the past uh, year or so. And um, I noticed it when I turned on the computer and was recording myself with the click track and Logic Pro playing with me. Um, what I often discovered was that I would start a note and I would see the straight, very well-defined line of the click on the recording and I would notice that my sound would start that much behind the click. So I'd hear the click and then my sound would come in a little bit. So I started thinking about what I could do to make that, uh, to fix that problem. And uh, I've kind of really embraced this idea of, of doing my daily long tones with um, a click track and with the recorder going. Um, it's very instant visual feedback. Um, I like to practice and feel like I'm getting something done and that I'm not spinning my wheels and spending time um, and not getting anything out of it other than just making myself tired. So this is a really good way to do it and today on this video I'm going to show you how. So let's go to the uh, let's go to the screen or Logic Pro X and I'll play some long tones and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now we're back at the computer and I've got an open project here that I've already recorded my click track into. Um, I'm going to make a separate video of how to do that. It's a little counterintuitive to me, so I, it bears quite a bit of explaining and there's a little bit of signal flow uh, trickery going on to make it work. So uh, we're going to use what we've got, which is a click track recorded at 72 beats per minute. I set my project to that tempo and I'm going to turn on my count in and I want a two bar count in that gives me more time to hit record on logic and then pick my horn up to play. I'm not going to turn on the Klopfgeist because it will just duplicate the, met the metronome track I already have recorded. You can turn that on and off by clicking or you can hit K. The K key is the shortcut which stands for Klopfgeist. Okay, so I'm going to record some uh, long tones here, and we'll talk about it. Okay, let's take a look at what we have here. So go back to the beginning. I'll spread our track out a little so you can see better. Um, so what we're looking for when we do this exercise is, I put the playhead here, you can tell. This is a good example of one that's not great. Um, there's a little gap there after the uh, click, and then a little bit of a swell. Let's see, that one's a little closer. Yeah, it's a little late too. They're all a little late, except the first one. I got a good start on the first one. So the thing about these is you can spend hours trying to get this perfect, and you're just going to drive yourself crazy. We're not going for you know utter perfection here. I just want you to be aware of whether you're starting relatively on time or not. Of course, I can practice and tweak this a little bit and get it better. Let me do another one and uh, see if I can do a little better job.
Okay, let's take a look at this one. That felt pretty good. So uh, again, 10 was pretty close. 12 was better. I'm more on time here. 14, I'm more on time. Measure 16, that's a good one right there. That's about as good as for me I'm going to see. I'll amplify the uh, size of the waveform a little. That's about as good as I'm going to see in my practicing. So, you know, again, don't try to make it perfect. Just get the idea happening, okay? The idea is for the instant air uh, to be right behind the tongue so that the sound starts exactly when you want it to and exactly on the beat. So now that you've seen that in Logic, now you kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. And I think this comes at the risk of making things more complicated than they need to be. But I want to point out that I originally did this to solve a very specific problem I was having. And I encourage you to, uh, especially when we record ourselves, uh, you can really learn a lot of things about what you're doing by listening carefully to what you're doing. And it keeps us from going in the practice room and just playing through things over and over and not really getting anything out of it. I have certainly done that many times in my career and in my life. Um, so I'm looking for ways to avoid that now. Um, as I mentioned in the blog post too, there's a couple other things you can do uh, with this exercise. And these are actually really great things to do before you get to the playing part. And one thing I like to do, um, if you've seen my little video about finger breaths and sort of as a pre uh, warm up breathing exercise, um, along with those lines, you can turn on your metronome and as the click goes, you can just simply blow air into your palm or onto the back of your hand. And so it kind of goes like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. So I'm articulating and I'm blowing. I'm not bearing down and blowing too hard. I'm just using nice, easy air that starts right with the metronome's click. Another thing you can do is take your mouthpiece. Do the exact same thing. One, two, three. One, two, three. I think that last one I played would be late if I actually had the, uh, the uh, recorder going and the metronome click visually. That one felt late to me. So this is something that today, when I practice, after I'm done making this video, I'm going to really pay attention to this and see if I can't get that happening a little, a little better. One, two, three. So, uh, if this helps you, or if it doesn't help you, I'd be curious to hear from you in the comments of the video. I'm also making a series of videos about how to set up Logic Pro to do this. Uh, recording a click track in Logic Pro is not the most intuitive thing, and it took me a little while to figure it out. And in fact, I think what I'm going to do is make a already ready to go Logic project that you can download off my website. So if you haven't been to virtualtrombonist.com, come visit me there, subscribe to my email list because most of this content goes out first on my email list. Um, and uh, please uh, share these videos and comment as well. And if there are other topics you'd like for me to cover, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks very much for joining me today. I wish you productive practicing and a good week. Thanks.